NathanBairdCleveland.com. Brian, um, it's not, I guess, necessarily that Kyle has had um, protection issues like chronically, but there were a couple of instances last week with the, the fumble and uh, the uh, grounding call. And there's been a couple other plays like that. I guess just how are you counseling him right now through those situations as I guess he continues to grow in the way that he anticipates those pressure situations in his set? Yeah, the number one um, most important thing is the football. And, um, you know, that's going to be the way this weekend. You know, it's, it's a huge part of the game. And you know we got to take care of the football across the board. Um, we got to make great decisions, and you know know when to cut your losses. Um, have a have a plan for when it goes, you know, the way that you expect it to. But have a plan for when it goes, um, you know, sideways. And and I think that's it's really what you have to do every time you go into a, a play. Is okay. Here's what we expect. When it doesn't go that way, you know, I might have to be in a management situation, which is let's not make bad plays any worse. And that's all part of playing the position. Obviously, would have been part of the um, planning and everything last year for a game like this. And when you're when you're seeing a team like this for the second time, are you building off of concepts and stuff that he would have already maybe been familiar with going into a week like this? Yeah, uh, you know, we play so many games, and, and there's so many, um, you know, just different practices. But I think the good thing is, again, for somebody who's been in the system for a couple of years, they've been through preparation before, they've been through. Um, you know, game planning situations. They've seen the games live. Um, you know, I think a lot of our guys understand what this game is going to be, the intensity. Um, but, but yeah, you know, now that, um, you know, the coordinators have been there for a couple of years, there's a little bit of a familiarity there. But they change year in and year out. Their personnel changes. It, it changes in the game. So, um, but it is good to have some guys that aren't doing it for the first time. Spencer Albrook, Letterman Row. Right. You guys look like you got a little bit more creative in the way that you guys use motion and things on Saturday. Uh, is that part of the progression with Kyle of just giving him more and giving this offense a little more with each week? Yeah, I think every week we want to keep adding more and growing. Um, you know, there's there's give and take to everything that you do. You know, you want to give the guys a clean plan. You want them, you know, when you move something post snap, like you said, or pre snap, excuse me, like like you said. You know, the, the pictures change. It changes for the guys up front. It changes for the quarterback. There's always give and take. But then it also changes the picture for the defense as well. So, um, yeah, every week we'll try to add more and more different wrinkles, keep adding to the, to, you know, what we think can stress out defenses. He's your fifth, he's your fourth uh, new starter since you got to Ohio State. Is this like on progression with where the other guys were with giving them more? Is it like game six, game seven when you start to give them more? Or is that different for the quarterback? Um, yeah, I, I, that's probably about right. Yeah, I think that it's it's similar maybe than than some of the other guys. Um, yeah, I, I think that he's probably right on pace. Uh, Jeremy Birmingham, Rivals, the podcast. And looking back at Saturday, Purdue did a really nice job. Pressure, Wise blitzed a lot. You saw Kyle sort of th throwing off the back foot a lot, maybe not getting the, the arm strength that you expect to see. Is that coachable? Is that just a kid reacting to the pressure? Or is it a mechanical breakdown somewhere else? I think there was a little bit of both going on. I think they brought, um, you know, one more. You know, you saw some zero pressure. And anytime that happens, um, you know, we'll certainly see some of that this week where they bring one more than you, can, than you can block. And when that happens, sometimes you do have to drift away from the extra defender to buy yourself enough time for the receivers to get open. And in that moment, you know, you, you may, may take the ball a little bit off the ball to allow the receiver to react. Um, but there were other times where that wasn't the case, where, like you said, there was either a breakdown in protection, which, um, you know, certainly the line has their part of it, but also it's every, you know, it's just, just not tight ends, it's the running backs, it's everybody involved. Um, but, but, you know, certainly what we want to do is we want to take a good drop. We want to get our feet in the ground and, you know, all the power from throwing the ball comes from your cleats being in the dirt. So, um, you know, there were some times probably we were drifting a little too much. Uh, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Ryan, how much did you recruit Drew Aller when he was in high school and just kind of what was that relationship like? Well, he's a, he's an Ohio kid who had a great career. Um, we already had Quinn Ewers committed to us and then, there was a reclassification, and at that point, uh, he was already committed to Penn State. Um, but a lot of respect for him for his program and, and certainly being from the state of Ohio. He's a very good player. 
What do you think of the player he is now, and kind of what kind of threats is he going to propose to the defense? I think he's done a good job in his first year. He's he's had poise. You know, he's a big, strong quarterback who um, you know leads the team well and manages the game well and, and has a good makeup. Um, and you know, I, I think he's got a bright future ahead of him. Brian, that touchdown, Kyle threw to K, where he just kind of ripped it in that tight window there. He's, Kyle seems to be getting more and more confident with his arm, just and his eyes, just letting the ball rip more. Good. How have you seen that growth over these, these first six weeks? Yeah, I think every week it, it's, it improves, it gets better. Um, there's certain things that you know you see for the first time every time you're out there. I think the one thing that's unique about our opponents this year is that almost every defense has been significantly different week in and week out. You saw something last week that we hadn't really pre prepared for in the last couple of years with, you know, very different defense. Um, you know, Notre Dame was different. Uh, Maryland was very different. You know, each week, you know, the fronts are different. The coverages are different. So it's, it's great learning for all of our guys to be able to, you know, identify what they're up against, learn from it, and then grow. Just trusting his arm and his eyes more. What's that conversation like with him as you try to um, add more to his play? Yeah, I think you're, you're trying to build the confidence up, and you're trying to, um, you know, challenge, um, you know, everybody, but but certainly, you know, Kyle to to grow in certain areas, and and um, and he's responded well to that. I think, you know, he's responded well to the challenges. I mean, this challenge that we have this week is. Is going to be a big one. And this is this is a very good team, very good defense. Certainly, well documented that they're you know the best defense in the country statistically. Have a lot of guys returning off of last year's team, so um, you know he knows we got to have a great week, and you know that's just that's for everybody on the team. We got to have a great week of preparation, obviously. Tony Gerdman, Buckeye Huddle. Ryan, how can you tell you're facing a, a great defense if they haven't faced any top offenses? Well, you know what they are coming off of last year. They're a very very good defense and. Um, you can see the turnovers they're creating, and um, you know they're still they played against some solid teams. It's not like you know they haven't played against anybody. Um, they they played against some, you know some some Big Ten teams, and, and you can just see the the one on one matchups. You, and then also, like you said, coming off of last year, I mean these guys have played before, and um, some veteran guys on that side of the ball. So I mean they're 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 a very good defense. And they've created some turnovers this year, a bunch of interceptions against Illinois. How much do you talk to Kyle about that this week? Is it more than any other week, or the same as it, as it always is? Um, just like every week, yeah. Um, it's just when you're in games like this, as we know, it could come down to one play. So everything is amped up. Um, you know, the consequences are higher. The stakes are higher, and um, that's the way you want it. You know, we've already been in one of these games this year, but it's just a reminder when you get in these types of games. Dave Biddle, 24-7 Sports. Dallin Hayden got his first extended action. What did you see out of him that you liked? Yeah, um, I thought when the ball was in his hand, he did some really good things. And I thought our old line um, opened up some better holes, but but all, but Dallin ran hard well uh, as well. Um, I thought once he got through the line of scrimmage, you know, he got up to the safeties and um, one run in particular, you know, he really lowered his shoulder and, and ran the safety over, which I think he's you know number 31 for Purdue's a really good young safety and um, and he, he finished that run really well so that was probably his best run um, but you, you saw his feet move in the hole and that was great especially for somebody who hasn't really played this year. He seems like one of those guys when the lights come on he always performs like going back to the Maryland game last year against, against Purdue is there something holding him back in practice maybe that he's not doing well. No, I, I think again that the best thing that Dallin does is when the ball's in his hand um, and you know he 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 does a nice job with that. I mean there's certainly more to it than that but. But you know we're we're happy with how he played on on Saturday. Going to the right, Dom Sperry, WBNS. Coach, I don't know what you can get into. How healthy are you guys? Any word on Trey, uh, Mayan, uh, Mecca? Yeah, I'm not going to get into all those guys, but but hopeful that we'll have all those guys back for Saturday. Uh, the other thing, you know what it's like playing over there, noon kick here. Uh, just what, what is, what's your message to the fans coming this week? Yeah, well, I think. I think the first thing is, you know, I know I talked to Gene about this, and, and you know, one one of the biggest things that he mentioned to me was getting everybody, you know, in the stadium early. Um, you know, we want to do that. We've done that in the past, um, you know, just to set the tone. But this is one of those games that, you know, we, we've got to really create a hostile environment for, for Penn State, um, in particular their offense. You know, when we're really loud in the stadium, any time that the, their offense has the ball, it makes it very difficult to operate. The communication, um, the snap count, you know, all of those things. And so 
the the louder we can be. It doesn't matter whether it's third down, red zone, short yardage. You know, if, if they're operating and they're on the field, the louder we can be, the more hostile that we can be, um, advantage Buckeyes. So, you know, that's really one of the things this week that I'll be talking about because, you know, this is this is a big game, but we got them here in, in, in the shoe, and, and let's make it, you know, as loud as we possibly can. Clay Hall, WSYX. When you're facing a defense like this, or number one in a couple of categories, number two in another, are you trying to find, is there a weakness to find, or you know that's not going to happen? Or when you sit around that table, somebody go, says, hey, I think we ought to, I, I've just noticed they don't do this well. I mean, has that moment happened, or you you know that's not going to happen this week? Um, I, I think the first thing you, every time you're looking at a game plan, you look at the personnel and then you look at this, the scheme and you try to do the best you can based on the personnel you have, based on the personnel that they have, um, what gives our guys the best chance to be successful, to move the ball down the field and score touchdowns. Um, there's a lot that comes with that. Certainly there's the schematics of it all. Um, it's also what your, your team knows, what your team has practiced. Um, there's also things that will come into the game plan that, you know, are specific to to your opponent. Um, that's not any different this week than any other week. But but there's a lot of hours spent in those meeting rooms uh, going through that to make sure that um, you know our players are playing fast. And I think that's important for coaches to you know give them a clean plan. You know not to not to put too much on them. You don't want them thinking too much. You want them playing fast. Austin Ward, the podcast rivals. Ryan, I know you'd never use an injury for an excuse for a game. Can you knew, probably knew you weren't going to have a Mecca on Saturday, but how much do you feel that in a game, considering all the different ways that you can use a Mecca, and maybe some of the creative stuff that we saw, you know, <coughs> maybe with Xavier specifically, how much of that is just a product of not having a Mecca? Well, yeah, Me Mecca, you know, we all know the production that Me Mecca's had and the impact that he's had on our offense the last couple of years. And... Um, anytime you don't have somebody like that, it does affect your offense for sure. Um, we do have great depth. When we lost Chip, we did get, you know, well, we didn't panic, but it was concerning because now you've lost three, you're starting running backs and, uh, or, you know, three of your, you know, your top running backs. And the great news was Dallin was able to step up in a big way. Xavier was able to step up in a big way. Um, and, you know, I thought Xavier, you know, graded out a champion. He played well in a lot of areas. He's very versatile for us. You saw him doing a lot of things, running the ball, catching, blocking. And, you know, when you have veteran guys like that who can do many things, you do have to get creative. You have to figure out ways to kind of make it work because uh, ultimately nobody cares. you got to figure out a way to get it done. What is it about Xavier that allows you to use him in such a variety of ways? Well, I think the first thing is he became a great special teams player over his career here. So he's a really good football player fundamentally. The second thing is he played running back. He actually played cornerback for a little a little time here and he's played receiver. So he's able to do many things. You know, he's he's he can be physical and block because he's learned how to play special teams. He can carry the ball, he can run routes. And when you do that and you have that skill set, you're a real weapon. Cleveland.com. With the situation that's going on with Chip Trey, Trey and Mayan right now, I know you guys wanted to redshirt him, but given the way he performed last week, but also what's going on with that room, has that decision changed at all? Whether or not you guys redshirt him? I mean, we're still going to do what we think is best to win every game, and, and uh, it was great to see Down run out there and, and play well in the game. So, um, you know, when that decision has to be made, we'll make that decision. That decision doesn't have to be made right now because we still have a little bit more wiggle room, but. Um, you know, if it comes down to winning games, and certainly, you know, we'll sit down with Down and make sure we're all on the same page. But I know Down wants to play, and Down wants what, to do what's best for himself, but also for Ohio State. For us on the outside, when we see Dallin run, whether it's last year or on Saturday, it seems like he's doing, hitting holes, reading it the right way. But sometimes the way you have talked about him in the past, it's, you bring up the stuff like the ball security, maybe the pass pro. Is he still developing those areas, and does he? Uh, is the ball security an issue in practice? Because we haven't necessarily seen no, it. No, no. I, I think, um, like you said, I mean, the number one job of a running back is to take care of the ball. I think you, know, you can check that box, you know, for, for, for Dallin. So, so that, that's that been great. Um, and so, yeah, the more opportunities he gets, um, you know, the better he's going to the better he's gonna be. And so we'll, we'll see how this week shakes out. Steve Hellwagen, 24-7 Sports. Yeah, Coach, the Devin Brown package there on the uh, goal line, the red zone, just uh, what were your thoughts? Looks like you had it down there three times with him. And 
got two touchdowns and then had the ball knocked out the other time, which kind of predictable, I suppose, with a guy in a new situation. Just what were your thoughts about how that all played out? Is it here to stay? Yeah, I, I think when when you get down into those type of situations, you know, you the numbers start to, um, you know, work against you on offense. And when you add the quarterback into it, it, it can change those numbers. Um, but the great thing about Devin is that, you know, he can throw the ball well. You've seen the throw, throw he made to to uh, to Brandon at the end of the game. Um, so the good he's not, you know, just a running quarterback. However, he is big, strong, and athletic and competitive. And so we, you know, had been messing around a little bit with it, but felt like um, going into that game with the weather situation, at least the forecast about midweek, we can't get caught in a situation like we had in the past maybe. So that was part of it. And then, and then we added that down in the red zone and felt like it was a good package schematically and wanted to let Devin go and, and kind of get his feet wet in that area and um, flush out any possible mistakes that may happen. Um, I thought he ran hard. I thought he competed. I think he, you know, um, you hopefully learned his lesson there on that one. But, um, but it certainly does give us a different wrinkle. And, you know, we'll continue to build on that package. You just mentioned the weather. It's going to be similar potentially this weekend. So how good is it what the guys showed at Purdue as far as short yardage, third down, that you might have to replicate a big time this weekend? Yeah, um, I mentioned it during the bye week. You know, you're into October and November in the Big Ten. So it's going to it's going to be, you know, at least three probably bad weather games. And so we got to handle it. So we'll, we'll practice in it this week if, if it shows up and, and be ready to go. But... Um, you know, we, we got to be able to run our whole offense. You know, we got to be able to run everything, but um, but we'll always look for ways that we can, you know, adapt to the environment, adapt to the situation when appropriate. Yeah. Another interesting wrinkle you guys showed was a QB sneak or, you know, tush push, where everybody wants to call it these days. Um, it seems like an easy play, but how much goes into, one, making that call on that play and two, go actually converting it? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's pluses and minuses to everything that you do, and... Um, you know, we, we try to, you know, we don't just have one or two plays in those situations. We have a handful of things that we work on, things that we save, things that, um, you know, we, we we try to grow upon, things that, you know, we do in a game that we try to have a counter off of it, you know, all those types of things. And so um, you know, we felt like you know, that was a good moment to, to get that right there and, and secure the, that first down. And, and we'll keep looking at ways to do everything we can to get that yard or two in short yardage. And just to follow up on, on Drew Aller's recruitment, you mentioned at the time Quinn reclassified, and then you looked at Drew, and he was already committed to Penn State. Is, is recruiting a player in that situation kind of like being trying to mount a drive where you're backed up against your own goal line? I imagine, I imagine it's difficult to, to really pull that off. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. if you're into those type of situations, for sure. Um, we were always respectful of the situation. He was always respectful of the situation. He and his family were great, and um, you know, it's just it's kind of the way it played out, but a lot of respect for those guys. Respectful. Just, just, yeah, just you know, when you're committed somewhere and you have a relationship over time, you know, it's it's just one of those things where you know you you kind of you know talk to them and, and reach out and just you know see you know if anything were ever to change, you know, let us know. But at the same time, um, you know, he was committed to Penn State and we respected that. Earlier, you asked about guys who were hurt. Denzel wasn't in that group. Is the hope for him also to be? Back? Yeah. yeah. Doug Lane Maurice, Kings of Columbus. Uh, Ryan, it seems like Penn State had, I don't know, three, four, five guys who can really get after the passer. Yeah. Um, what do you think of them, and what do you think of the way your offensive line has protected Kyle so far this year? Well, I think um, there's always plays that we can improve on, um, but this will be, you know, our big, the biggest challenge to date. They're, um, you know, very twitchy, very quick. Um, you know, they get after the quarterback at a high level, um, you know, both ends. You know, our NFL players for sure. They've been very productive, disruptive. And so, you know, our, our tackles in particular are going to have to do a great job. Um, you know, they do, they are creative about, you know, where they align guys and everything. So it's, it's going to be everybody. You know, they do a lot of moving and do a lot of blitzing. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to be on our game. But, um, you know, it's been like that against Penn State for a long time. And I think Penn State's second in the nation in time of possession. They're not, haven't been very explosive offensively, but they, they grind it out. You know, numbers of plays for you guys and number of possessions has been something that's come up this year. Is there anything you have to prepare for in case this is a 
a short possession game because that's stylistically kind of how they play. Yeah, well, it, it's interesting. I, I think um, they've done a really good job this year. They have a good offense, they have a good offensive line, big and strong. The running backs run hard. Um, but but some of those games that they've been in with you know with all the turnovers, I think, and maybe the Iowa game there was 90 to plays to like in the mid 30s, which I've never heard that before. And so uh, they've done an unbelievable job of creating turnovers and um, you know giving their offense the ball and. And then, like you said, they've kind of held on to the ball and played complimentary football there. So, yeah, we've got to look into all those things. Certainly taking care of the football is going to be of utmost importance here. Um, but, but no, they've, they've done a nice job of that. So, um, you know, we'll have to have contingency plans in place for that. Brendan Gulick, Buckeyes now on Sports Illustrated. Coach, actually kind of building off Doug's question, um, Penn State's almost dead last in the country in number of plays that have gone for 20 or more yards. They just haven't had a lot of explosive plays. I'm curious how hard it is to prepare for things that maybe you haven't seen on film. Like you think you know what a team is capable of because you see their talent, but how hard is it to prepare for something that you haven't actually seen? Yeah, I, you know, I guess that's a question that comes up at the beginning of every season, you know, but when you're this far into the year, typically that's not something that gets talked about a whole lot. But to your point, they've done a lot of um, – They've had a lot of plays in plus territory and, you know, certainly in the red zone. I think maybe they lead the country in most plays in the red zone. So, um, you know, you may not see as many of those types of plays, but certainly, you know, they have them. And then, you know, look, you're, you're six games into the season. You've got enough of a, of a body of work for your own um, resume here to look at. How pleased are you with the way your team is progressing from where you were at the beginning of camp to the beginning of the year to where you are now? Well. It's, um, you know, every week you, you come up for air and figure out where you want to get better, where you need to get better. Um, and then, you know, you, you kind of, you know, identify the things that you need to continue to enhance, but then other th things that you need to improve on. And, you know, you go into the game and, and that, like I said, that's, that's the test. Well, we got a big test on Saturday. So it's hard for me to say right now because this is just such a big game and our focus is all on this game. So, um, again, better idea after Saturday. A couple weeks ago, you talked about the art of coaching, when to be patient, learning how to be patient, when to bite your tongue, when to be fiery. It seems like, and players confirm that you are a little more fiery this year. I think they call it, uh, you're cutting loose. The question is, <laughs> is this something, you have the pulse of your team better than anybody. Is this something that's intentional that you're doing? Is this just a progression of being comfortable in your skin? Um, I, I think I think this team likes to get coached hard. I do. I, I think, um, you know, they they do. And, and this is this is a great team that can get pushed. And um, you know, I I, I just they respond well. Um, and this is a tough game. There's a lot riding on every game, and, and we know that. And so. Um, you know, it's my job to bring it every week, every Saturday, and push as hard as I can. Um, but you know, for the most part, it's it's thought out beforehand. You know, I'm not just you know, yeah, um, flying off the handle. Although I guess every once in a while, I guess I would. But you know, I think the guys like to see the passion. I think they like to see that part of it, and so it's my job to bring that, and I'm going to continue to do that. And you're more comfortable doing it. Or were you ever not? Well, I, I think it, it. I think it kind of depends on your team. Yeah, I think it does. Um, I think you you, you got to do the best best you can as a leader to, to lead your team and, and what your team needs in that game, in that moment, in that year. And you know, you know, my feeling is this is this is what this this team has needed up to this point, and we'll keep identifying it. You know, maybe it'll change tomorrow or whatever. But again, you know, I think that's what you try to figure out as the head coach. Yeah. Ryan, we saw the Kyle around a QB sneak. He kept on that one read play. I'm just wondering if you could also use him in the ways you used Devin last week down in the red zone of the run game, or, or what difference have you seen between the two that, that each of you used Devin? Yeah, no, it was good. It was good to see him get that that pull. Um, you can see he's capable. And and you know, then the next play gets the sneak, like you said. So, um, you know, if, if we can add that part to the game, that certainly helps us a lot. And so we're going to keep challenging Kyle as well to do that. Um, you guys seem to have a, a 
maybe the most balance I've seen between like gap scheme and zone schemes in that game against Purdue. Is that more of this works against Purdue, or, or did you maybe stumble upon we think our offensive line of backs handle the stuff a little better? I, I think a little bit of both. You know, we, we looked hard, obviously, coming off the Maryland game to figure out are we, are we doing the right things for our guys. But then also that was a unique front. It was a five-on-the-ball front, and we had to do what was best. So a little bit of both there. But, you know, when you do well, you have to identify why you did well. Um, and then you got to be accurate with your assumptions. This season's probably a little bit different than the last two in the way that you approach a game. Um, obviously, you have a young quarterback uh, and the defense you can rely on to get stops. Now, I guess, how has that changed your approach to the way you manage a game and the decisions you make and why you make them when you make them? Well, I, you go into the game trying to figure out you, know, you have different keys on offense, on defense, on special teams that you have to work on to get done. I mean, yeah, you, we identify those, but then you have to look at it holistically of, you know, how are you going to win this game? You know, how do you? And then sometimes you predict it and it kind of goes the way you think, and other times it doesn't. Um, and, and that's based on what you have in all three phases. So, um, you know, and then, and then the game changes. You get a feel for how the game's going, and you try to do the best you can to adapt to come up with these plans for um, how to put your guys in best position to win the game. And, you know, at halftime, I say all the time, you're going to be winning, losing, or tied. And then you kind of figure it out in the fourth quarter. But this is going to be a four-quarter battle. Always has been, always will be. Justin Holbrock, WCMH. I'm going to go back to Rob's question real quick. Why do you think this is a team that responds well to the way that you've been coaching this season? Case Dover says this is a team that has scars from the past couple of years. Is it that? What do you think it is that is allowing you to coach them this way? Um... Yeah, I guess I guess you know we've all been through a lot together. Yeah, so maybe that's it. But um, I don't I don't I don't know. I don't have my finger on it. Maybe I'll have an idea after the season. But um, we're just gonna go hard. We we know what it takes to win games. You know, so we're gonna go attack this thing as hard as we possibly can. And and that's what we want. And I know that's what you know that's that's what we all all we all want. That's what the fans want. You know, just to go as hard as we possibly can. And and swing as hard as we can. And again, that's, that's what we're going to do on Saturday. But it starts with practice today. We've got to have a really good, intense practice. We've got to be flying around today. Um, I get more worked up for a Tuesday and Wednesday practice. I think I've said that before than sometimes on Saturday because it's so important that we do well. So um, we'll keep swinging. And, you know, this is, this, is, this is a good group of guys. And like you said, we all have scars. They have scars. And, and um, hopefully, you know, the more battles that you're in, the more battle ready you are. Way over, but I, it seems like there's still so much we don't know about your team. I don't know if you have a, I mean, do you kind of agree with that? That there's still a bit of a mystery, um, just how good you are, and and are your weaknesses truly weaknesses, or are they just, you know, normal steps in development? Um, probably say the same thing about Penn State. Um, well, yeah, I was gonna say you probably you probably said about a lot of teams right now across the country, maybe. Uh, you know, I mean, so I, I don't know. I don't know if I. I have a good feel for who we are as a team, um, but now it's time to go play, you know, again in a matchup game, you know, top five matchup um, again. And um, I think, we, you know, we certainly have learned a little bit about, you know, the quarterback. We've learned a little bit about some of the guys who we didn't know early in the season. But, um, you know, we, our guys, and we have the pen to go write the script of what the season's going to look like, and that's really what matters. So, um, you know, a big part of what you're saying is going to be what happens on Saturday. Obviously, you had a huge win against Notre Dame. This is the second big one. Uh, how much does at least having that experience give you confidence or at least you know kind of where you stand from that game? Yeah, it gives you a little bit of a barometer, I guess. But that that game is so much different than, than this game. Um, you learn a little bit from every game you play during the season. But and that was a very good team. You can see what they did last week. So... Um, it certainly does give you know some guys who maybe haven't played a lot some confidence, knowing that you know we did win that game, and, and you know we we could have played better and, and won by more, but uh, we didn't, and um, but we did win the game. So there's kind of that that you know um, again barometer that you use to say, okay, here's what I know playing in a game like that. Here's what I know I got to do if I'm going to improve because that was a couple weeks ago, and we need to be you know much further along than we were at that game. Yeah, Tim. Show. Yeah, good. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Jerry. I got about 100 questions. I only asked two. Um, Dallin Hayden, for example, four running backs. You know, you, you looked up uh, last week, and he was your guy. You know, uh, 
my point is going into a practice like this week where the other three guys were iffy for some reason or another last week, how do you apportion those reps in practice knowing Dallin's ready to go? You know, I know you won't give me all the secrets. And then number two, do you focus more on what his shortcomings are, which look to be, for one of another term, pass pro? You know, he could be a little bit better in that. How, how do you kind of like uh, manage that in a, in a week like this of this importance? I think you, you take a look at how the week goes. I think, like you said, you, you, you spread some of the reps around. And then you come up for air at the end of the week and figure out you know, where guys are at, how they looked in practice. And like, does he get more reps this week because of that, you think? Um, I, I think you know, the guys who are out will, will still get you know, just as many reps as well. I think you'll, you'll try to spread those around. And um, Tony always does a great job of that, which is why I think Dallin was, was ready to play in the game the way he did, because um, we, we do spread those reps around. And I know it's a question every preseason of you know, how are you going to you know, spread those reps around. And I always say, well, it's a long season, you know, and, and so that, that's kind of what happened there. But, um, but, but Dallin has been getting reps in practice. And so I think that's, you know, give, give Tony credit for that, getting him ready. Yeah, seems to show up on Saturday, right? I think so. Yeah. And, and the other thing, with Devin Brain, you and I, you don't remember this, but I asked you about this like a long time ago, five or six years ago. When you put, a, put a, a something in, you, you say it's very important, you touched on this a minute ago, to not just have that one play, but to have tangents off of that yeah. one play and stuff. And, uh, uh, with Devin Brown, does it give you more uh, confidence now? You know, obviously he learned from fumbling at the right. goal line. Uh, but does it give you more confidence now to go to that? You know, like much like Urban did with Tim Tebow, you know, way back when, you know, 2006. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that's why we did it, you know, to, to, to see what it looks like, put it on the field. You know, it's like one of those things you just got to do it. And we did it. And, you know, we, we already worked through one of the issues, you know, and so hopefully we're growing from that. But like you said, you know, then you build on it because it is different. It does give you a little bit of a different change of pace. And um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I liked, I liked his look in his eye. I liked his competitiveness. Um, he's got to learn from that mistake. But other than that part of it, you know, I thought he handled the, the situation well. Thanks, man. You got it.